Let us pray. O Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, by your almighty word, you make the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. We draw near to you in all our bodily and spiritual needs, for there is none to help us but you only. We beseech you, touch with your divine power our diseased members and our corrupt hearts. Open our ears to hear your word. Loose our tongues to speak righteousness and fill our hearts with the power of your Holy Spirit. That beholding the wonders of your grace, we may confess your name before men and praise and glorify you and do all things well. And live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, ever one God, world without end. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh God, our rock and our In the name of Jesus, who opens what was closed, hopelessly closed, and what he opens, no one can shut. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. How do I know? that I will be saved? How do I know that I am among the elect? How do I know that I will be with God in heaven one day? Can I be certain? Should I even be? Or is it better, is it humbler somehow to wait and see? Those questions are real trouble. Real trouble in the heart. Trouble that rings deep sigh from Christ. And as we turn our attention to the gospel lesson that we heard today, we recall there was a man who was deaf and was mute. They brought this man to Jesus and begged him that he would place his hand on the man and touch him. This poor devil who has the world going on all around him, he can see it, but he can't hear, can't understand, can't participate in what's going on all around him. But everything is closed to him. And should he ever try to communicate with the world around him, he opens his mouth and what comes out is garbled. It sounds strange. You know, my wife was taking classes for a while in audiology, and she found out some interesting things. I thought, you know, it's polite when speaking with the deaf and of the deaf that you all are, if you have the gift to hear, you are hearing, not normal. And those who have deafness are deaf, politely speaking. It's not that they cannot hear. And all this makes perfect sense because you see, no one wants to believe that there's something wrong with them. And here, God is the one who makes us to hear, and God is the one who makes us to speak. God made us to be people of words, and he gives gifts to your ears, and he gives gifts to your mouth, and something is missing when those gifts aren't there. And what can you do when something is missing? We people who want to bargain with God, always want to bargain with God for something good, but how can you? Bargain with God. You can't speak. But here we have the scriptures. And the scripture pours over into our worship. And our worship pours over into our prayers. As we heard it this morning. O oh Lord, open my lips. And you speak back. My mouth will show forth your praise. And 
And here the scripture shows us not just one poor devil who lives in the world and can't understand, and can't see, can't hear and speak, one poor soul who is deaf and mute, but all poor sinners, all of us who were unhearing and speechless before God. Make haste, O oh God, to deliver me. And you speak back. What? Make haste to help me, O oh Lord. Unless you do it, my, my lips are closed and my words are unformed. My mouth is praiseless and thankless and profane. Not only lips, but also my eyes and my ears and my heart all closed until you come, until you speak, until you touch me. You and I are here this morning not as people who have never heard before, have never heard or spoken the words of confession we use, or the songs and hymns and prayers of thanks and praise and petition. You only feel safe in knowing where to find them if you feel that we need them. Happy to listen elsewhere and apply these ears and these mouths of ours to all kinds of other things, and happy to learn Take in and drink in and learn the world's way of speaking. What began when the church brought you to Christ and pleaded with him to touch you, you have added sin to it. So have I. Added sin to it. And there is danger there and a gradual fading of your senses. The silencing of your voice until finally, what? Is it hard to pray? Is it weird to be overheard giving thanks? Is it strange to open your throat and sing? Or are you waiting for God to speak directly into your heart rather than through his words and the ministry of his gift? How would you ever know in that case which words were good and which ones were bad? But let it be all of us. Let it be all of us when Jesus takes the man and takes him aside from the rest of the crowd as if to say to him, I will now deal with thee. Thee, I say. Not y'all. But God certainly does deal with all of us and yet at the same time it is also intensely personal. Thou, thou hearest it personally. I baptize thee. I forgive thee. And take and eat. This is the body of Christ which was given for thee. What does Jesus do with this one man, the deaf, mute man? It says he put his fingers into the man's ears. This is too close. This is too personal. I, I need some space from this. You want to draw back. What are you doing? Jesus, with his words and with his touch, he invades your space and he invades your time. It's worse even than that. There is finally no bargaining with him. There's no earning with him. And there's no keeping of the precious sins that we love so much. But when he touches you, everything ends. Ends this lonely and terrible, quiet life lived without God because it's lived without his words. And then he spit. He touched the man's tongue. What are you doing? We would recoil from this. Meanwhile, Jesus sighs deeply because he carries our infirmities 
our weaknesses and our sins and the guilt and the punishment and the death that goes with them. He takes them all into himself. Jesus knows even better than we do how bad it is that we cannot hear him and that hearing we don't believe him. We speak profane words and preach and teach all the words that are unformed and have it all wrong. Jesus sighs deeply, knowing what it costs him to restore us to peace with God. And to restore wholeness and good health to the whole person, even to all eternity in the resurrection of the body. Where there will be no more deafness, or no more stammering, and no more corrected vision, no more aches and pains, or anything else. What would it cost him? But with his eyes lifted to the Father, Jesus says it anyway. The first word that deaf man ever heard in his whole life, Ephetha, he said, it means be open. And that's when the whole world, with all of its sounds and noises and music, came flooding in on him for the first time. And for the first time, his tongue was loosed. And, and for the first time, he spoke. My mouth will show forth your praise. And begins a life of prayer. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. And a fit glory be. For all that you have done and all that you still do for me. And for all that it cost you that you so willingly laid down for me. All that sorrow and all that hard labor as Jesus took on himself your infirmities and your weakness and your sin that after doing all things well, Jesus does all things well, that then he should go alone as if he were the only sinner, goes to the garden all by himself and weeps and sighs and pleads until his heart would explode and that even just a taste of this kind of desperate anguish when you get hysterical the sobs and the spit come full, pouring out of you as you cry and as you plead but this all came home to him and the waters of his face and what else could you call it they poured out as balm for your healing Jesus went to the cross and bled and poured out his lifeblood to wash you clean with it, suffered and laid down his life in willing and perfect obedience to the Father of God. And to be the medicine of life for you. Take away all your sin from you. To fill with his blood the cup that you drink and to be the bread that you eat. So that you will know that he means he means thee. And you will know that thy sins be forgiven thee. All of you, each one of you, as surely as he lives, then and there when he speaks, here and now, he is answering your prayer. The Lord opened my lips. And you say that. My mouth will show forth your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. And you say back, make haste to help me, O Lord. And in this way, your Lord Jesus himself, he, he is and he brings it about a, a worthy and a fit glory be. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, forevermore. Please join with me now in singing our